Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel for a brand new video. This time we'll talk about ASP.NET Core and we'll get started with a, I would say, very simple uh, a subject, but it is still a very, I would say, underestimated one. And we're going to talk and we'll have a deeper look into the startup.cs class. And the reason why I want to do that is that uh, we actually, when we get started with ASP.NET Core, but even if we are regular .NET developers or .NET Core developers, we just take everything for granted. We have this startup class here and we basically know uh, what it does in a very, very basic manner. But then when we work on real applications, it happens very often that uh, we come across different scenarios where we see that we get errors when we try to register our services or when we try to register our middleware or things very similar to that. And this actually comes from a misunderstanding about how actually this startup class is actually designed to work and how different things are registered or configured at different stages. And this is why I just want to take a deeper look into what we have here in the startup class to try to understand how exactly this startup class is called, when it is called, when the methods of the startup cl class are called, and things like that, which will help us better understand the anatomy of an ASP.NET Core application. So let's get right into it. What I have here is a very basic .NET Core 5 or .NET 5 API project. And this is actually the default template that we get from uh, Visual Studio when we create a new ASP.NET Core application. But I have added only two middleware here that we'll re reuse throughout this video. And I have also added a very, very simple data seeder service, which is actually not a data seeder. It just contains a list of numbers. And we have here a method on the service that allows us to add a random number to the list. Once again, the concept of the service or the logic of the service is actually not important here at all. What we care about is only what happens here in this startup class. So let's get started with it now. I want to start by trying to better understand what actually happens when we start a new ASP.NET Core app. And here, if we go to the program class, this is actually the, ver the very first important part, because in the end, an ASP.NET Core application is nothing else than a regular console app. Now, as in a regular console app, we see that we have this public static void main method, which is actually the entry method in our application. Now, if we take a look, what happens here is that in this method, we actually call this create builder method, and then we create, we, 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 we run the build method on it and run. And what actually, what we actually do here is that we create a host for our web application we build that host and then we run that host. So we have here three different steps, I would say. Now here, this create a host builder creates actually in our case, a new default builder or uses a, a default builder and configures a web host. So this is the first step, the configuration. Now, what this actually means, and here we see that we only have this use startup, which actually refers to the startup class that we have. But actually what happens under the hood is that ASP.NET Core configures the web host with different type of information. It gets, or it creates a configuration object that is able to read for from our uh, app settings files. We can even override this and read different configurations from different files so that we don't have all the configurations in one single file. Uh, it adds logging to it. It creates a service provider where we'll be able to register our services. So all these things are happening here under the hood when we uh, execute or when uh, the runtime executes this configure uh, web host defaults. Now, during this phase, we see that we have here this call as use startup, which actually means let's look in the startup class for further configuration of this app. And what actually this means is that, first of all, ASP dot, the, the ASP.NET Core Runtimes does some magic tricks under the hood and registers different services and configures the host, the environment, and things like that. Then it passes 
to our startup class where we can add our custom configurations like services and middleware. We'll talk about it just in a few seconds. But then probably there are some things that happens under the hood after we use the startup. And after everything is created, then the host is built and it is run. And actually when this the host is run, that's actually the moment when our application goes live. Now, why this is important is because when we get here to use the startup, we see here that Web Builder use startup and we specify that we want to use the startup class that we have right here. Now, the idea is, as I said once again, and this is very important, before this startup is actually used, ASP.NET Core already does configure different things on uh, that uh, application builder. Now, what this actually means, and this is why we go over to the startup, and I would like to take it actually uh, from, uh, from top to bottom, is that we have this constructor here, and sorry for that. So the default template, you have in the constructor an iConfiguration object, and you use it to assign it to this iConfiguration property that you set here. Now, the idea is that in this constructor, we could use dependency injection and we can inject uh, services or configurations that are already created or defined by configure web host defaults before this startup is actually used. And in fact, these methods or these uh, services that, that we can inject here in the startup constructors are actually only three. One of them is the iConfiguration service. The other one is the i uh, web host environment. Let's call it uh, ENV. And the third one is the i uh, host environment. Now, the difference is uh, that in this case, the iWeb host environment contains environment specific things for a web application, while the iHost environment contains environment specific information uh, on a generic host, because we could theoretically run ASP.NET Core not only on a web server, but we can create our own host uh, where we actually want, uh, want to run it. But the important thing is, and uh, I want to emphasize this. In this startup constructor, there are only three services that you can inject, which is the iConfiguration, the iWebHost environment, or the iHost environment. These are the only available services at that point when this constructor for the startup class gets called. So we could actually reuse this and we'll use the iWebHost environment as we run here this application on a web host because it is a web application. Let's add also like we have for the configuration. We add a public i web host environment. Let's call this env, also only with the getter, and uh, we set this. And the reason why this might actually be useful is because in the iWeb host environment, you have a lot of different information about your web host. And in the configure services method, for instance, you might want to be able to register different services based on some information that you take from your host. So for a very, very basic example of this, we can say here, for instance, if env.isDevelopment, so only if the environment is a development environment, then I want uh, services at the, let's add the scoped one. And we'll add our data seeder service. Okay. Now, the important thing here is that here, this service will be added only if we use, or if we run this application in a, a development environment. What actually this means, it means that if we have an ASP.NET Core variable set, to the value of development. So only in this case. But there are other things of this ENV that you could actually use. For instance, you see that uh, here you have different type of information, which is the web root path, uh, which is the web root file provider, the content root path, the application name. Uh, you see that you have a lot of information here. And it's very, very important because you can actually take this information if needed. For instance, I don't know, if you have a service of uh, which you want to use 
to write in, in the content route. So you want to write files there or in the web route. You can simply then take this value and pass it to the services actually that uh, uh, that you want to register and that actually rely on this type of uh, information. So once again, this is very, very important. The first thing in the startup is that in this constructor, we can inject uh, three types of services. One of them is injected by default in the Visual Studio template, which is the iConfiguration service. But then we have we can include uh, iWeb host environment or iHost environment. And let's uh, go back here to is development and start to also run the application. Of course, nothing will happen in this case because this is only a very, very simple registration. But what I wanted once again to emphasize is that in the constructor for uh, that for the startup class, you can inject only these three services. And this is really important because I have seen developers uh, that try to inject here in the constructor services that they actually add here in configure services, which is of course, not very, very fortunate. Now let's go one step further in our deeper look on into the startup class. And then we have actually two methods here. We have the configure services method and we have the configure method. Now these two methods are very important. They are both uh, called by the runtime, but they are called in a specific order. So no matter, for instance, we could actually take this one, for instance, let's cut it. Uh, and we could uh, add it at the end. So it actually doesn't matter the order in which we actually have this method declared in the class. They always get called by the runtime in the specific order. First, we get the configure services. So this is the first method from the startup class that gets executed. And afterwards, after the execution of configure services happens, then the runtime calls the configure method. And as I said, this is what I wanted to show you is that it's actually not important the order of, of the methods in this class. Actually, if you use resharper and you actually use it to, to clean up the file, it will actually reorder it and the configure method will come before the configure services method, even though in the template, in the default template, the configure services method is before the configure method. So once again, I just also did this switch manually because I wanted to show you the order of these methods is not important. So not the order in which you write them, in which you code them, but the order in which they are executed or called by the runtime. And once again, the configure services method gets called first and then the configure method gets uh, called second. Now let's take those methods one by one. In the configure services method, we can use it to configure our services. So what are services? This video won't be a deeper look into services and lifetimes and things like that. We on that we will have a totally separate video where we'll uh, treat the concept of dependency injection in ASP.NET Core. But just as a common understanding, a service is actually a piece of reusable code of, of or, or usable components of your application that you want to be able to inject in different parts of your web app. For instance, you can add a service which calculates, uh, I don't know, some taxes, for instance, and you can inject then the service if you have added it here to these configure services, we add it to the uh, dependency injection container. So we can inject them automatically in a controller if we need them, we can inject them in middleware, we can inject them in other services, uh, or we can uh, actually inject them also in background workers, actually wherever we need to implement that or reuse that type of, of, of functionality, we can actually do that. So that's the whole point of having or of having this idea of services in uh, ASP.NET Core. Now services can uh, be registered here very, very easily. And uh, as an example for that, we have already uh, done this registration for the data seeder. Now, the only thing that I would like to do is to not check the environment for that. And I just want to add my service to uh, add, um, let's add it as code data seeder once again, and that's it. Now we have added our data seeder service and we can inject it everywhere. Now, I guess that's everything about this configure services method.
So let's move on to the next step of what happens in the startup class. And then last but not least, the .NET runtime calls or invokes this configure method. Now, the configure method is totally different than configure services. And the configure method is actually used to configure your middleware pipeline. And the middleware pipeline is a very, very important concept in ASP.NET Core. And I, or we have here on this channel, I guess, three or four different videos on middleware in ASP.NET Core. We have a basic overview of what a middleware is, what a middleware pipeline is, how the requests travel through the middleware pipeline and how the responses travel back through the same middleware pipeline and what we can do there. We have also videos on creating a custom middleware. So uh, if, if you want to get a deeper look into what middleware is, then please ref refer to those videos. I will leave a link to those videos in the description of this one. So you might be able to check them out later if you want. Now, the idea here is that uh, when we configure middleware, it's actually very, very important uh, the order in which we actually uh, configure this type of middleware. Because actually, as outlined in the other videos, once a request comes in, it travels through all the middleware actually in the order of registration. And this is why it is very, very important. But another important thing, and this is actually what I want to emphasize more in the configure method in this video, is that as you have already configured your services, this means that in if you need some services in the configure method, you can easily inject the services uh, via this method. So it's actually very, very easy. The only thing that we have to do is just provide here, for instance, I want to inject a I, an iLogger factory. And I want to inject to inject my data seeder. Okay, so what I can do here is then simply reuse these services in the configure method. For instance, let's create a var uh, logger, which would be um, logger factory. Dot create logger. And we have to specify the category name for the logger configure middleware. So this is actually where our logger uh, is used. Now, if we have a logger, for instance, we can for uh, we can log here logger dot log information. Environment is development specific middleware will be registered this is what we log here but then we can also add a log here so logger dot log information and here we can say for instance that uh, registering https redirection middleware and i guess you get the idea the same way we could for instance uh, go here and log things i guess the important part here is that uh, we can simply in this configure method we can inject the services that we have registered uh, previously in the configure services method and this is useful for instance because uh, if you register a db context you could inject it here and actually do some database cleanup or data seeding or things similar to that. Uh, let's also add registering our uh, routing. But the same way we could use our own custom service that uh, that we have created or that we want or that we have injected here in this configure method. So we have here uh, data seeder equals uh, seeder. Now I guess we already have the seeder, uh, so we can just um, Seeder dot let's call this add random number, which will add a random number, and then we can use the logger uh, once again log information, and here we, we can log the last number that was added. Last number added, and we can see here it is the seeder dot numbers dot last 
and then uh, to string. Make sure that we call it correctly. Okay, so right now we will see that if we run the application, uh, we'll be able to see different type of logs here. So it's all the logging that we have added in the configure method. Okay, so we can see here that we have here the last number added, which was 89. Then we see that environment is development, specific middleware uh, uh, will be registered, then registering HTTPS redirection middleware, then registering routing. So all the logs that we have written here, we can see in the console. And this is all only possible because here in this configure method, we can actually inject uh, the services that we need and that were previously configured in this configure services method. And this is the reason why I guess now you get a better understanding why the configure services method gets called first and why the configure method gets called second. Because here in this method, we just want to use services that we register here. And this is a very, very important concept. Now, here I just want to go to another very, very important topic in the way that you could customize actually your startup class and the way that you register services or middleware is that you can use an iConfiguration filter interface to configure actually middleware in the configure services method. Now, the reason why you would like to do that actually is a very, very uh, simple one. And the, the main idea of that is that you actually, for instance, especially if you create maybe a class library that you will, I, I don't know, make available through a NuGet package, ideally, uh, consumers should only, I don't know, maybe make a call uh, to add your service, and then the service should actually add all the dependency that it needs, which means all other services, but it also should add uh, some middleware to the middleware pipeline. So the idea is that let's let's go one by one. We have here two middleware, of course. We have this author header middleware, which adds a new header to the response and logs the information. And we have here the order header middleware, which adds a new header, which is called order, and it just generates a random number. So the way we could do this, for instance, if we go here, after uh, we log everything, but before environment is development, we can say here app dot, uh, and both of those middleware uh, have also extension methods. And here I can say app, I uh, use author header middleware. And we can say app dot use order header middleware. And actually what happens is that will add all these two middleware to our pipeline. And if we run the application and look just a little bit in the console, uh, we can see here that, uh, well, what it happens, uh, adding order header to the response, adder order header to the response. And since the browser opened the Swagger documentation for this API, which calls actually two times, then we get this information two different types. Now, the idea is that if we see here also is the order. So first, we have the uh, author header, and then we have the order header. And this is because this is exact, this is exactly the order in which we have registered these two middleware. Now, let's assume for one second that I have a class library that is designed to handle orders. And what I want to do is, uh, I want to provide consumers the option to actually only use a single method registration, maybe in configure services, but I also want to add some middleware to the pipeline. And also what I want is that I would like to add some middleware that gets executed before all other middleware here in the pipeline. So in this case, in this scenario, we can use uh, this very nice feature that we have in ASP.NET Core, which is an I startup filter. Now let's try to add this here in our services. So Let's add a new class and this uh, class, let's call it order uh, header startup filter. And we just have to implement I startup filter. I guess we have to add the using for that. 
which should be no problem. And if we implement the interface, it's actually everything that we need. And you see that in this implementation of the interface, we just get this uh, configure method that takes in an application builder. So exactly what we get in the configure method here. And it returns that same uh, application builder and then it will be passed actually here. So what it means is that we will get the application builder in our services. We will add our middleware to it. And then when the configure method is called, that I application builder will be passed to the configure method with our middleware already registered. So this is the whole logic of, uh, of this type of, of configuration. So let's also add some, some things here. So what I would like to do here is, uh, I would just want to return uh, the builder. Because you see that we uh, we return an action of i uh, application builder. So in that builder, we can say uh, builder dot use middleware, and we can specify that I would like to use the order header middleware, and uh, that should do it. Of course, I need to add the necessary usings, and that should be it now if i have this uh, i startup filter a filter what i can do here is i can go back to the startup and i can say here for instance services and uh, i can add this uh, as uh, transient and i say that i want to add a service which is of type i startup filter and the implementation is the order header startup filter okay so we have added this to the configure services now we can remove the order here and we see that use author header is actually at the same place so once again what i would expect to happen here is that when the configure services method gets called which gets called before the configure method here for this one uh, for, for this service of type I startup filter, I actually get here an uh, I application builder to which I am able to add my middleware once again from the configure services. Uh, this happens everything in the configure services method. So I am able to use the middleware. And then when the runtime calls the configure method, as it happens here, what it will be, it will pass the I application builder that I have already configured with my middleware in this startup filter. And this is why I would expect that right now I would see the logging from the order middleware before the logging from the use uh, author header middleware. So let's run this application once again and check exactly out what will happen. Okay. So we had an error here, I guess, but uh, yeah, we had an error. Sorry for that. That is very, very unfortunate uh, because I guess the error was, let me go here to the order. Uh, okay. Of course, what, uh, what happens here, here is that, of course, we have to invoke the next. Sorry for that. It, because it's regular to what happens in a normal middleware. Here I am able to call the next and I pass in the builder and that should do it. So yeah, this is the reason why I actually have uh, short circuited the entire middleware pipeline because I haven't used this uh, next delegate. So basically everything stopped here. So the request or the, the pipeline was not configured further. Everything stopped here because I didn't use this next. So this is why it is important to use this next delegate also in um, in startup filters, but also, of course, when you write your custom middleware. Now, let's run the application again. And once again, uh, when this gets called here, we see that in this time we add the order is the first one that gets executed and the author header is the second one that's, that gets uh, executed. And once again, this is only because I have decided to use this iStartup filter. 
and I can use this iStartup filter to register middleware to, to the pipeline before any other middleware in this configure method is registered, which actually uh, could be very, very nice. For instance, if you uh, if you develop a, a, a class library that, that you make available through a NuGet package, you might, for instance, create an extension method, uh, services uh, add my service, and in that extension method, you would actually uh, add, for instance, your data seeder, but you would also add the startup filters and therefore configure or add middleware uh, to the pipeline that is specific to uh, your library. And in fact, this is actually a technique that is used by most of, uh, of the different libraries that are used in ASP.NET Core, like logging libraries uh, and so on, because everything uh, or almost everything also needs some custom middleware to it. And in order to avoid the necessity to add a service and then separately add and configure different type of middleware, they just supply one method and they use startup filters to actually add all the middleware that they need to that pipeline. Good. I guess uh, that should be it for this video. We covered all the logic that we have actually in the startup file. We tried to understand how the startup of an ASP.NET Core application works, starting from the program class. Then we have explained uh, what we can actually inject in the constructor of the startup class. And then uh, we have talked about the difference of the configure services method and the configure method. and why it is really important to know or to be aware about the order in which these two methods are called by the .NET runtime. Because this allows us the, op the option actually to inject in the configure method actually all the services that we need and that we have also previously uh, configured or added here to the dependency injection container. And we have done this by having the logger as an example and our custom seeder uh, also as an example, and we use the logger done just to log different type of information here in this uh, configure method. And then last but not least, uh, we have looked into why what an I startup filter is, and we have discussed about the scenario, the scenario in which using a startup filter might be useful. This being said, thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy this content and you find it useful, please don't be shy and share it with your peers on your social networks, wherever you want. And also a thumbs up and a subscribe would be very, very much appreciated. Thank you once again very much for watching. And until the next time, I wish you the very best.